The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Amos. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions, and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe, and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek God and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brother or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This gospel passage we hear this day from Mark provides one of the most existential questions. Good teacher, what must I do? For me, I realized that it was some 
32 years ago now, but this gospel really hit home in a powerful way. I had embarked upon a new journey, fresh out of college, armed with my first job, which didn't just mean moving to a new town. This first position took me overseas to a different country. I was excited and I was confident, confident not only about what success would look like, I had even devised a measurement as to how far I was progressing with my plan. It came about with a wristwatch. My own success symbol ladder started out with a Gucci and then moved up to a Movado on my way to the top that I thought would be a Rolex. When I got there, watch out world, well, there I was, starting that success model, so I thought. A job, an apartment, clothes, decent money, that Movado, you might say, on my way to realizing the dream. But I was quickly realizing something was off. Why was I so incredibly empty, feeling isolated and alone? Hadn't I done what I said I was going to do? Far more than to ask what is the symbol of success, the question we hear this morning has to do with an ultimate aspect of the questions, why am I here? What comes next? Good teacher, what must I do? I cannot tell you how many times I have encountered people still trying, struggling to embody this scene we hear from our gospel, asking, what is it, that single thing I must do to get it right, even as a disciple? Modern televangelists and others sadly still peddle an all-too-simplistic worldly answer, and people buy it eagerly, as if a full and right relationship with God is some sort of scorecard or recipe to follow, a set of plans to execute, a list of things to do or not do. But our faith is not about an economy or simplistic actions. It is about relationship who we are and what we trust to pattern our lives around. And that right relationship Jesus bids us to follow is what right, rightness or righteousness is all about. It affects who we are, going deeper than just what we do or don't do. So we hear a penetrating word. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go and sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Rightness, in the way Jesus speaks of, in this new way of life, this kingdom life, is not about yet something more to do, but rather who you are as a whole. Jesus saw him, loved him, and called him out. The kingdom of life Jesus speaks and bids us to welcome is a call to reorient and redefine who we are, allowing our actions to follow as a reflection upon that new sense of identity, that relationship with God. Answering the man, Jesus is not simply giving a new directive to yet one more thing to do, to reduce this exchange to that simplistic action is to miss the real point. Jesus saw him, loved him, and Jesus is asking the man to redefine what he identifies. What is his identity and his trust? Who you are and your relationships are about are ultimately what you trust to allow one or to live in that right relationship with God, and thus all you relate to. Reorient who you are and what you're about as the person, and you'll start to see and act differently. I think the man is more like us than we may care to realize. Here is a faithful, God-fearing man who is trying to do the right thing, obeying the rules, the laws, and yet Jesus is saying he's missing the boat. You can do all the works you want, and yet you can miss the plan of salvation if you're not careful. It's about who or whose we are that directs what we do, not the other way around. It's about who and whose we are that affects what we have and what we want still. We can think or even worry about what to do with our possessions, and yet we have, ever have we ever considered what our possessions do to us? How do we define our lives? For this man, it was his possessions itself, now that were, which possessed him. The challenge that Jesus gives seems clear to me. Let go of that part in order to become this new part. 
Jesus calls the rich man to cast aside all other dependencies and reform who he is foundationally, inviting him to discover a deeper relationship with God, to trust God with his whole heart, rather than a qualified piece of this or that. Debunking the simplistic notion of discipleship being about isolated or even accidental actions or just simply good intentions. It's more than being nice. But here stands a person whose whole life has been defined by one thing. For him it was wealth, and sadly he will not accept a new definition of himself. More closer to home, I hear Jesus asking what it is in myself that still needs to be released. That's what we get from this gospel, you and I, every single time we come to it. What is it that I need to let go of in order to realize the person God is calling me to become still? How about you this day as you hear these, this good news? What do you think God is asking you to let go of, release in order to take up? To let die in order to live? To give so that you can receive fully? The path of discipleship is free and a conscious choice. It is an active decision we not only make once, but allow to reorient all that we're about constantly. Discipleship not only allows God to recreate who we are again and again, it also means that we trust God to be the fundamental source for all that we need, what we can do, and what we can become still in God's sight. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Kristen, our bishop, Ken, Nettie, and Wendell, our assisting bishops, and all bishops, for Darren and Martha, our priests, and the ministry of all the baptized, for all who serve God in His Church. We pray also for those whose needs are closely linked with ours, and for those who suffer from any sickness, grief, or distress, especially those on our parish prayer list, including A.K., Bunny, Kathy, Dave, Debbie, Dorsey, Jane, Karen, Lily, Lon, Rachel, Rich, Sandy, Tasha, Tom, Vern, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, especially remembering the people of Ukraine and the Holy Land at this time. We pray for the first responders and the aid and relief efforts that continue there and around the world, as well as all our shut-in parishioners and their caregivers. I invite your own names and concerns, either offered either silently or aloud. We pray especially for peace in our homes and around the world, remembering those who have lost their homes and families to violence here or abroad, especially in Israel and Palestine, as well as those who serve and protect our own freedoms, especially Harrison, Matt, Becky, Griffin, Jack, Jennifer, Stephen, Philip, and Tony, for their safety, as well as the just use of the power that is placed in their hands. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. Let us pray together for our Stephen ministry, saying, Gracious and loving God, guide our Stephen ministers who continue to step out in faith as they walk the journey with their care receivers. Bless the relationships created 
and strengthen the trust in you that is formed. May our Stephen ministers and leaders feel your presence and be empowered by your spirit, granting them wisdom and courage to do the work you have prepared them to do. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. I invite your own thanksgivings offered either silently or aloud. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all the who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen.